Good morning, good morning, good morning. Once more, we're gathered together for our virtual Bible study, and we're going to resume our examination of the giants of faith found in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. In times like these, we need something extra. We need something that the governors, government can't provide. We need something that the doctors can't provide. We need something that even our friends and families can't provide. Quite frankly, we need something we ourselves cannot provide. We need our faith. We need heaven sent help to make it through these tragic circumstances. Now, as it has been since man walked the earth, God has always had a word for our worries and a scripture for our suffering. And since our faith needs to be strong, let's look at some of the giants of faith highlighted in Hebrews chapter 11. We've seen that faith is the foundation of our hopes. It's upon our faith that our belief and that God will do what he said he would do. Faith is more than just believing in God, but it encompasses an idea of a total reliance on God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, Paul is <clears throat> writing to Hebrew Christians to warn them against going back into Judaism. In the previous chapter, chapter 10, he says the just, or those who have been justified, shall live by faith. Faith is more than just believing that God exists and is powerful and is gracious, etc., Faith is relying on him or putting our trust in him. The Old Testament is filled with references to trust and reliance on God. Psalm chapter 18, verses 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Psalm 37, verses 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God revealed himself to man and proved his faithfulness by the things that he did and still does. This is to inspire trust from us in him because we've seen his mighty and marvelous work. Our trust in God is the proof of our faith. And I believe sometimes we ought to just pause for a moment and remember the great things that God has done in our lives. That will convince us that he is faithful. When the events of the exodus from Egypt are examined, it's easy to see God telling Israel, trust me, or basically have faith in me. Some of the plagues against the Egyptians were announced and then performed. This was to show God's people that his word could be trusted and he could be relied upon. The performance of his promises should grow our faith or increase our trust in him 
because of the evidence. Back to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 3. Paul writes, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. According to Paul, our faith gives us assurance that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, that the things which we see did not make themselves. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The apostle writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. If faith can confirm that God made the world by his word, faith will support my hope that a better day is coming. The philosophers of that day taught that God created the earth out of things already available. They held the belief that matter was eternal, and Aristotle says that nothing can be made out of nothing. Now, this is as far as the ph philosophers could go. But our faith assures us that God alone is eternal, and that in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. Faith allows us to answer the all, all the eternal questions, for our faith is in God. Where did we come from? God created us. Why are we here? To worship and serve God. Is there life after death? Yes, according to God. What is our destiny? An eternal existence, either with God or apart from God. All of this is proven by our faith. At present, we see trees are produced from trees, beasts and birds and fishes from others of the same kind. And man came from man. But we also believe that there was a first man who did not owe his being to man, but he owed it to God. There were first beasts and first fishes and fowls, etc., which did not derive their being from others of the same kind, but were created. Also, all manner of trees and plants, etc., God therefore made all these out of nothing, and his word tells us so, and we believe his word. So, so Paul said, by faith we believe that these things that we see were created. The writer now shows example after example of some who gained recognition because of their faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speak it. Let's see now the story of why Abel is mentioned. Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 through 15. And Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Jehovah. And she again bare his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground and offering unto Jehovah. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Jehovah had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very raw and his countenance failed. And Jehovah said, Cain, why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? 
If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. It came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth out unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto Jehovah, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And Jehovah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Jehovah set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, as we examine this occurrence today, there's some things I want you to note. Uh, Genesis 4, verses 3 through 5. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Jehovah. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. And of the fat thereof. And Jehovah had respect unto, look at this, Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Now, Abel was able to please God by his obedience. There we see an example of acceptable and unacceptable worship. The worship was unacceptable because of the worshiper. The Lord noted the giver and the gift, not just the gift. To, to blame rejection of Cain's offering on the content only misses the reason that Paul even mentions it. Secondly, note the reaction of Cain. He got angry and his countenance fell. He was not sorry. He was angry. He was not repentant. He was angry. Cain's attitude wasn't right. When God gave him a way to be accepted, he did not even seem to accept that. He says in verse 7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Jehovah informs him that if he does well, he'll be accepted. Abel did well, and Abel was accepted. He was deemed righteous because he obeyed, and his obedience got him recognition. God wants us to obey. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse number 22. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of lambs. Moving forward, verse number 5 of Hebrews chapter 11. The story of Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now little is written about Enoch, but no better words can be used to describe a child of God than to say he pleased God. Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. 
And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Now, in a chapter of faith, Enoch is mentioned. The Bible tells us that he walked with God for 300 years after the birth of Methuselah. I wonder how long we can walk with God. Here is an example of a servant of Jehovah who hung in there through thick and thin for 300 years. This pleased God so much that Enoch did not see death, that God took him. Great faith, people. Great faith. When I think of it, all I can say is just, wow. Next, let's look at some of the elders that obtained a good report by their faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It is clear that the intent of the apostle is to show that the reliance on Christ is far superior than reliance on the law. But faith is the key. If we don't believe that God is, we have no hope. If we don't believe in his promises, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, we have no hope. Next week, we're going to go a little bit further in our examination of these giants of faith. And I encourage you to pause throughout the day, pause throughout the week, and, and just think of God's goodness to you. Think of all the things that he's already brought you through. And that ought to strengthen your faith for the next trial and the next trial and help you to make it through our current trial. I truly believe that God is going to come through for us because he's already done it too many times. Thank you and may God bless you.